Ladies and gentlemen, Merry Christmas! And let us try to look at IntelliJ services. It is awesome, it's cool, it is something that you should use already. It will save you a ton of time, um, it, will it will save you some typing at least. Um, so what is it? Of course you need to Intel game for, for this, and then there's something called services. And you probably, you, you might not know what it is, but it's actually, you can use it for multiple things. One thing is that when you have a Spring Boot application, or it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter which application that you're dealing with in IntelliJ, then you can have all of these runtime configurations that you have up in, in this list right here. You can have those shown under services instead. And the way that you do that is that you first you press the services tab, right? It's down here, and you can also find it under view tool window, and then services somewhere here services or maybe it's tools actually but it is also visible you can find it up in the menu i think it's view tools somewhere there or you can just press the uh, the tab in the bottom right there and then uh, to begin with you just have a total blank screen in the left side and uh, then you will press plus and then the first thing you would like to add is the runtime configuration types because if you like me have different profiles you would see my app I, sometimes i started with production settings sometimes i start this with development settings and the difference is of course if i go to my um, configurations then if i go to my spring boot configurations right here then i have one with active profile set to production and another one where it is set to development and of course this is two different uh, situations um, and then I get my, yeah, and then I, I want to see which one I started, of course, and I can do that by pressing play. I can also debug by pressing debug. It just gives a much better overview. There are three states. One is not started, the other one is running, and the third one is finished. And I, of course, I can see the lock right here. I can also start, uh, I can also start two of them side by side. Of course, I would have to change the port of one of my applications right now, so they could not both run on port 8080, which is um, which is the default. So of course, I would have to set the, my, my application minus uh, m minus profile to something else. So if I set the if I set the port to something else, then I could have both both of them running, and then I could go and look inside each of them if I want to. I don't want to do that right now. Just want to show that um, I definitely definitely recommend you to, to run your uh, Spring Boot uh, Spring Spring Boot profiles from the services because uh, it gives a better overview. And then also name your give give some good names for your configurations right here. Um, actually, uh, my app maybe I don't, I don't need even the, even that. I, maybe I just need the production. The most important thing right here is actually is the profile. So I'll just I'll just name it the the, the profile, and then I can press play whenever I need to uh, to press play. And I can also find the 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 console so the locks. So that means that if, even though that I've stopped this one right here, then I can still find the console lock, and then I can solve whatever problem that uh, that, that I actually want to solve. Or I can check out some stuff in in the lock if I want to. That is one one huge thing uh, you can use services for but that is not the main thing the main thing is docker you can press plus right here then you can add a docker registry you can add a docker connection the docker registry unfortunately only works with some kinds of um, with, with some with, with some registries i'm using digital opens um, digital oceans sorry digital oceans uh, docker registry and it is not supported it does not matter which one of these i choose when i type in my uh, my my, uh, my address uh, right here if i go and write the registry digital ocean digital ocean digital ocean dot com slash code this that is my uh, 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 this is my register right here and then if i give in the, the api key, key right here those two places then um it, it, it does not work simply there is not there's no support uh also not in the generic type um it, it, it says there's no support for for that type of um, of registry which is the same of course but if you're using gitlab if you're using docker hub if you're using i've, I've actually not tried yet brain space i'll try that at some point if you have tried some uh, yeah maybe some older docker version 2 uh, registries then or, or maybe you have some other generic docker registries that is um, supported by uh, by this then it is awesome because you can actually go in and look inside the registry you'll get a nice cool list of all of the images you can go and um, you, you can go and delete all of the images you can 
somehow clean up. You can go, uh, you can also try to pull the images. So it will just save you a lot of typing. So it's, instead of you going to the terminal, writing Docker, pull, uh, blah, 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 then uh, you can actually just go look in the list right here. So it is awesome when it works. And I hope that they will uh, give me support for my digital ocean uh, at, at some point in time. So this is my, I, I am, I'm not paid by digital ocean, by the way. It's just, um, I just like them as a cloud provider. Uh, I think they are, uh, they give a good overview of um, yeah of what I have and how much it costs. Um, I've never been um, uh, negatively surprised when I when I look at my monthly uh, expense with DigitalOcean. I have definitely been negatively surprised with uh, with the other cloud providers, uh, especially in the beginning when uh, it, it looks like everything is free and then you just uh, add a lot of services and then of course at some point it's not free anymore and then you get a huge bill. I've tried that a couple of times. Uh, it's no, it's not, it's no fun. <laughs> but uh, DD solution, yeah, I like those. But that was not, uh, that is not the point. Uh, I will let us keep focus here on the services. So there's a third one right here. That is the Docker connection. This will connect to your local Docker, um, to your Docker installation. I have that right here, and then I can just press play. So then it will actually connect to. My, I'm using Windows, so it will uh, connect to Docker Desktop. Let's see what happens. It should work. I have. Can I connect to it? Uh, okay, so I'll just uh, let me just delete it and then recreate it. I've just updated Docker actually, maybe that's why, but let us just see right here. Docker connection, yes, Docker for Windows, yes. Okay, let's see what happens. Connecting. This should be the cool part because see, here we can actually see uh, uh, both Docker Compose and the, all of the containers and all that. Um, and, and, and. Let me just start Docker desktop. It looks like the Docker engine has not been started yet. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I've never tried that this doesn't work. It's green. It should be running. It should be running. IntelliJ, please connect. Please connect. If I go to a terminal, write Docker PS, what does it say? It has, it is not the demon is not has not been started. Okay. So let me go here. What do I need to do right here then? How can I then Docker run blah blah blah? It, it says green right here, that's a bit weird. Um minimum. But when I go to a terminal, nothing actually works. Uh, but up, so that, that is a bit weird. I've just updated uh, I've just updated the BSWSL. Cannot connect to the Docker. Isn't the service, is Docker service start or something like that? I don't remember. Uh, yeah. The Docker engine itself is not running. So, what will I do? What will I do? How can I, how can I debug, restart Docker desktop? Yes. Please do that. Please do that. <clears throat> yeah. Let us see if it starts now. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, so let us see if it works now. I will just go to services again. I press connect. Now it works. Now it works. Yes, of course it works. Uh, this was just to show you that if you want to, if you get problems uh, when you upgrade your Windows machine, then you can always go to, uh, or when you, upgrade, or you want to upgrade your WSL or Docker, then go to troubleshoot, and then you can press restart right here. That will help you sometimes. It was just to show you that, that is ex it was, this was planned all along. Uh, so now I have my Docker uh, instance right here. I have, oh, sorry, I have a Docker engine right here. And here, it, it, this split right here is awesome. I've not seen that in any applications before. I have Docker Compose right here. This version. In some projects, I use Docker Compose. And here I can see all of, all of these containers, or all of these, it's actually services. They're named services when you define them inside your Docker Compose file. So then I can make, actually see them right here, and I can actually go and look at the log. 
I can rest I can start up the, the container again if I want to. I, I don't want to do that right now. I want to start an image though. But uh, if I want to start up again, I could do that, and I can see the log from yeah from when when uh, Prometheus was running. Uh, so this is awesome that it's split up. Uh, Docker Post has its own area. Then we have containers. These containers uh, have been stopped, but they're still there. They are not deleted yet. Usually, I choose minus minus rm for remove when the when a container uh, is, has stopped, so it's not uh, cluttering up. The, um, it's not taking up unnecessary space because when a, when a container has stopped, then usually I, I don't need it anymore. Then I would spin up a new container based on an image, of course. So here I can actually okay, I can delete it right here. I guess uh, let me just try this one right here. Can I delete the the container? Yes, I can press the delete button and then I delete my containers. Of course I can do that. So, and then we have my images right here. My images and uh, this is awesome also right here. I can see I have a lot of images and I can save some space if I mark these and I delete them, right? Because they take up a lot of space. I can see that the my Grafana space, uh, my Grafana image takes up 314 megabyte, right? Another thing I can see that I actually, I made a, a very good uh, Spring Boot 3 uh, video and in, in there I actually built a new uh, Spring Boot 3 um, image. Uh, it was actually uh, it was actually uh, natively compiled, so it was compiled with Graal VM and uh, ahead of time compilation, so it was very uh, small and it was made with the build pack, and that is the image that I actually have right here. So now let us, I can push the image also. That's also something that's very cool. If I press push, then I can just if the registry part worked, it would be even cooler because then I would get a lot of help right here. I could give it a tag like latest or whatever tag it should actually have, and then I could push this to. Yeah, to DigitalOcean, if it if it worked, it does not work. So it it's a bad example, of course, right now with the registry that I use. But you can also start create container right here. Create container. This is awesome. Create container container right here, based on the Docker image. Yes. Okay, that went a little bit too fast because I would like to. I would I'll let me just stop it again because I, I want there are some options I would like to take off. I want to show you the, the the possibilities. Create continue, create server Docker. Yes, the image. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Mike's SP3 app like this, and then I want to show you that you can actually bind some ports. So this means that I can actually map out port 8080 to port. 8095 for instance and then i want to map that to be mapped to port 8080 inside this docker container this is a spring boot application i have some cool uh, endpoints that i can reach so and of course i can also map more stuff out if, if i want to i can also add i can also add some more what is it i can add i can add uh, run options right here minus minus rm this means that it will automatically delete itself when i am done playing around with this uh, Docker container right here. And what is the name? The name is up here. That is, uh, yeah, this is the name. So this is, uh, I'll name this my, my SB3 app, right? And then I'll say run. So this is my configuration right here. And then I can reuse that config configuration if I want to. I don't I don't need the multiple instances. Um, don't need anything else, no. I can also store this as a project file and then, um, yeah. Then I can actually use it again. Yeah, let's just store that right there. Then I press run and let us see what happens now. Now I should get a new container. Yes, look, this is my application and look how fast it was. Yes, do that. Please do that. Uh, that was the run file that it generated based on my settings. So here we have port 88. Let us try to uh, curl port 80. Uh, 95 because that is what we mapped it out to. So let's take the package JSON file right here, and then I want to curl. Yeah, I made this. You can see right here. I prepared this curl right here. Curl local host port 8095, and then we should get a nice hello message. Hello astronauts, we are going to the moon. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, intelligent this is an awesome feature. Get brains, good work, good work right there. There's a lot of things to complain about, <laughs> but not uh, not the feature, except for the registry that is uh, it doesn't support the DigitalOcean registry. So, yeah. So that was um, was there anything? Yes, there's there are more, there are more stuff, there are more stuff. 
because you can already see right now that if I would have typed this, if I would have typed this in the terminal, then my fingers would already be, my choppy fingers would already be tired. They're not tired now. Now I'm fresh. I can code, create some more code instead. And uh, that's one thing I want to show you that you can actually press terminal. So now I've marked my container right here. And now I press terminal right here. And it does not work. Yeah, that is a little bit bad. That's because there's no, uh, okay, there's no, there's no SH shell inside this um, dark container. This is because it is built with build pack and, and they are actually building the, it, is, it has been built, um, it, has been, it has been built very, to be as small as possible. Um, and there's no shell inside this image right here. That's a problem. So here we have the container ID. Let me just copy that. So now I'll write Docker, Docker, XX. So now, now my, get tired. my choppy fingers get tired anyway. So that's okay. Because this is debugging. It's not okay. This is a bit annoying, right, actually. So then we say container. And then we say... Um, then, we, then we say SH for shell. Minus I, IT is for interactive and terminal. There's no shell in there. That's incredible. What about batch? That is incredible. I've never seen that actually. There are no batch and no shell. Oh, that is. Pin. That's incredible. Okay, but that's how this. That's how this. Um, it's just because the image does not have a shell. But if the Im if the image had a shell, which is the no most normal thing, then you would actually be able to go into that uh, shell just by pressing um, just by pressing terminal, right? You can also stop it. You can press restart right here. Um, you can also go and I think you can go and see the files actually if, if we go to. Here's the lock. Um, inspect. Inspect. That will not give us the files. We want the files. I think that we have to choose the image. Then we have to find the image. Spring boot. And then we have to say. I don't think we can see the. I don't think we can see the files actually. Mm, how was it? I think that is possible some other way actually. Um, so I'm right here. Let us just right click. What can I do right here? Two processes attach exec create terminal and the terminal is not there so it's not possible to so create um, um, um attach and now now just attached um still didn't give uh, i still don't have a terminal but it's it's okay I, this was actually what i want to show um i think i've i think this is enough actually so uh, thank you very much to all my patrons uh or patrons sorry all my patrons all, all my patrons you will get uh yeah you will get access to exclusive materials like uh how to get from Spring Boot to Cater, cool video and uh, some awesome posts, of course. And of course, uh, if you are the Diamond patron, then you will have, then you will also get access to the loyalty program where you get a free mark and a free uh, sticker, all depending on how long you have been a patron uh, and a T-shirt and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I just want to say thank you very much to my patrons. Um, it is awesome. It is uh, it's helping me a lot. And also, Merry Christmas. Have a great evening. And uh, remember, even though it's Christmas, it's no excuse for slacking, right? You need to keep on um, educating yourself and teaching yourself some cool stuff like Spring Boot, technology, editors, programming languages, etc., etc. Hope to see you again soon. I don't have any else, uh, anything else to say. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.